Hi and welcome to another episode of Grey Mouse Does Stuff. In this particular video I'm looking at Corral Video Studio and we're going to be setting up a new project to create a PAL DVD disc. Okay, so let's begin. As you can see here we have some sample videos um, and the one that I have captured using my capture card I have called cat sample. The first thing we need to do is to determine the type of video it is, the aspect ratio of the video, in order to set the project preferences accordingly. I will show you what I mean. So if we check the properties of the cat sample, you will notice that the attributes of the video is 720 by 576 with an aspect ratio of 43. What that means is that we want to ensure that the project preferences reflect the output as being the original aspect ratio of 43. Now check out this little clip here explaining the differences between different aspect ratios. Wait. What? What's this all about aspect ratios? Well, I'll give you a little example of what the difference is between the two aspect ratios. The aspect ratios is 4 colon 3, which is known as full screen, and that's for the old school TVs. And the more modern TVs use an aspect ratio of 16 colon 9, which is also known as widescreens. Now the reason that the aspect ratio 169 came about was because film makers started to favor the aspect ratio of 169 uh, because it provides more visual real estate to help to tell a story. In other words it gave them a greater canvas, greater canvas to work with. In this very first picture here, you will see an older TV which is at 4.3 full screen. Um, you can even just see the TV1 logo on the lower right hand side uh, telling you that the whole picture is on the screen. And this is an example of modern day TVs which is an aspect ratio of 16.9 uh, or known as widescreen. So as you can see there's quite a big difference between full screen 4.3 and widescreen 16.9. This is going to show you the results of what happens if you choose the wrong project settings. This is an example of a DVD which has been encoded at 16.9 and the original footage is the original 4.3 and as you can see on either side um, there are black bars and those are called letterbox so the picture is simply not filling the whole screen so this is so this is what happens when you encode at 16.9 and you leave the source video at 4.3 you get a letterbox effect if you do have the project settings cr set up correctly you should get what this picture shows which is the video has been encoded as 4.3 and the finished DVD file has also been encoded at 4.3. The picture is now full screen and does not no longer have the letterbox bars. So it is essential that when you create a project that you check the source video to see what kind of video it is and then change the project properties accordingly otherwise you may end up with a video which has got black bars on either side and you'll end up having to do the whole lot all over again. I hope that helps explain um, the differences between aspect ratios and the different results. Welcome back.
hopefully that has explained a bit about the various types of aspect ratios. Let us create a new project here uh, and make sure that the output of DVD will be full screen. So the first thing we need to do is settings, turn widescreen off and it will says it will modify your project settings. Well we've got nothing in there at the moment so okay. Great. So now we drag and drop the video onto the timeline. And we give it a quick test. If you look at the preview window, you can see the black bars uh, on either side, which is causing let letterboxing. But when we configure this project properly, it will not have those letterbox bars on the final DVD when it is burnt. Let's make a movie out of this one. Create disk, DVD, For the moment we don't want to create a menu, Let's just remove the menu option. This way when you stick the DVD into the DVD-ROM drive or your DVD player, it will play from the beginning without coming up with a menu and telling you to press play. Right, there's a couple of things we need to configure here and to ensure that we get a full screened video. First of all we check here, ensure that it is set to 4.3, then we go to the project settings, fill out the following, two pass conversion, leave that ticked, make sure that's 4.3, that's fine, then click on change MPEG settings and go down to customize. This is the the video encoder that it will use to encode the DVD format and it's doing the audio and video 25 frames per second which is the standard for PAL the screen size is 720 by 576 and the display aspect ratio is 43 so that's correct so you've got to make sure that that's on 43 now we go over to the compression tab the best quality is 100%. If you have an original video, the original video would be at 100% quality. The longer the movie is, it will take more space on a DVD. In order for that to fit, you would have to lower the quality of the video and it will degrade the quality down to 70% but since this is only a very short clip we would like it to be 100% you could fit about an hour and 10 minutes onto a DVD at 100% quality which means that what you saw originally on the TV will be identical to what you burn the moment the, the quality starts dropping because of lack of DVD space, that quality will start to degrade. Under two pass encode, um, this is also important. Leave this at variable. Variable encoding um, is the one that I recommend that you use. The encoder itself decides which frames to encode at 8,000 kilobytes per second. Uh, when there's any um, fast movement on the screen say somebody running um, or a car uh, racing along the screen then there'll be less compression whereas if it came across a scene where two people are sitting next to each other and simply talking then it will compress that more because there's a lot less differences between the previous frame and the next frame because it's only the mouths or the hands which are moving slightly. 
I would also recommend that to save disk space to select the Dolby Digital Audio Core codec. If you use PCM it is basically uncompressed and that will really swallow up your disk space. Set that to, to Dolby Digital Audio, just basically left and right stereo and the audio bitrate 256. So if you think of that as your like an MP3 file, the higher the kilobytes per second the better quality it is. Um, you can even set it at 1 to 8. 256 is, is, is a nice quality for audio. So we just go OK on that one. And then we go OK. And then we go Next. Uh, it will show this preview of what it will look like when it's finally finished. It looks pretty good to me. Go Next. Uh, basically what we need to do is set up a few things. First of all we want to create a two disc and it's going to be a DVD video to make sure that it's going to be a full screen aspect ratio of 4.3 check that that is selected check the project settings again do pass yes customize yes 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 yep that's all good okay and the last one we have to do is do settings and options and go to disk template manager the most important part here is to make sure that this is PAL 4 column 3 aspect ratio so we just close this and then basically we press burn and we just wait for the bar to go all the way across just successfully created a PAL DVD using the correct project settings thank you very much for watching I hope you found this useful